What's up, Geometry? Thanks so much for tuning in with another episode of Math with Mullins. Today we're going to be looking at our Chapter 2 test review. This is on page 119 in our textbook. I asked you to try the odd numbers. For some of them, I'm just going to go through all of them just for um, simplicity's sake. I will still post the answers for the evens if you still want to try the evens. So here we go. Number one, it says, um, use the diagram to determine if you can assume the statement. It says, line AB is perpendicular to plane M. In this case, we can say no, because there's no indication, or no markings, okay? For number two, if you tried that one, points F, G, and A are coplanar. Yes, they are in plane P. For number three, points E, C, and G are collinear. Here is E, C, and G. Yes, they are all on the same line. So yes, on line G, C. Or if you even said line G, E, that would work as well. Okay. Number four, planes M and P intersect at B, C. Yes, that, in, that intersection is indicated. So here is plane M, here is plane P, and then B, C has that perpendicular marking. Um, it is also being represented by this steady line of CB. Line FA lies in plane P. This one would also be a yes. Here is line FA, and this is on plane P. The last one, FG, intersects AB at point B. This one is no, it's not actually, F and G are not actually connecting, so it would not be considered an intersection of AB. For numbers seven and nine, we're gonna solve the equation and justify each step. What I wanted to do first is maybe solve the equations first, so then we can go back and talk about our justifications. So we get six X plus 31 equals negative 23. I'm gonna subtract 31 from both sides. So I get 6x is equal to negative 54, divide by 6, divide by 6, x is equal to negative 9, okay? So the first thing I did was a subtraction property of equality. Then I also used the subtraction property of equality here. Um, to start us off, this was my given, so the first part was the given. Then I did the division property of equality, and then we simplified. Okay, so x is equal to negative 9. For number 9, we're going to distribute first. So 21x minus 27 minus 19x equals negative 15. I'm going to combine like terms here. 21 minus 19 is going to give me 2x minus 27 equals negative 15. That one didn't write all the way. Then I'm going to add 27 to both sides. Negative 15 plus 27, that's technically subtracting, so that should be 12 is equal to 2x. Finally, I will divide both sides by 2, so that x is equal to 6. So the first thing I did was a distributive property, then the addition property of equality. Whoops. Next, the division property of equality. And last but not least, simplify. Okay, starting right off the bat though, this is what I was given. For number 11, it says write the if-then form, the converse, inverse, the contrapositive, and the biconditional of the conditional statements. What I'm going to do is go ahead and type these and we'll talk about them. Okay, so here are our following statements. The if-then statement should state, if a relation pairs each input with exactly one output, then it is a function. Converse, if a relation is a function, then each input is paired with exactly one output. The inverse of that, if a relation does not pair with exactly one output, then the relation is not a function. And then the contrapositive, if a relation is not a function, then each input is not paired with exactly one output. I think the inverse, I missed something there. Um, if a relation does not pair each input with exactly one output, then the relation is not a function. By conditional statement, just use these the words if and only if. A relation pairs each input with exactly one output if and only if it is a function, okay? Let's continue going on with question 13. 
Use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture about the given quantity, then use deductive reasoning to show that the conjecture is true. So when you think about number 13, the product of three even integers, like 2 times 4 times 6, that is equal to, what, 48? Or if you do um, 4 times 6 times 8. 4 times 6 is 24, and 24 times 8 is 192, okay? These are going to create even products. Another specific way to think about this is if you had... 2 times a number, and 2 times another number, and 2 times a different number. That's 2m times 2n times 2p, where m, n, and p are all different even integers. Um, they don't have to be consecutive, but I do understand this. You could multiply 2 times 2 times 2, and that's 8, and then combine m, n, and p. So that just means your product is a multiple of 8 just because all even integers have 2 as a factor so if you're multiplying 2 and another 2 and another 2 you're at least going to get the number 8 okay for number 15 the formula for area of a triangle is a is equal to 1 half bh where b is the base and h is the height first we're going to solve for the for h and justify each step so here's my given Then the next thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2. This is the multiplication property of equality. It's a terrible multiplication symbol. So I have 2a is equal to bh. And then finally, I'm going to divide both sides by b. And that is the division property of equality. So I have 2a divided by b is equal to h. Now I can go ahead and solve for it. The height, I'm finding the height if uh, the area is 558, so 2 times 558 divided by 36 should give me the height, okay? So using our calculator, I'm doing 558 times 2, that's 1116, divided that by 36, I get 31 inches is equal to the height. Okay, the last one, number 17, writing a proof using any format. Our given is that two, angle 2 is equal to angle 3, and TV is bisecting UTV. Um, my favorite proofs are the column proofs, so we are going to try that. So I'm going to have my statements and my reasons. Okay, the statement is, my first thing that always goes there is our given, right? So this is statement 1. And statement one says angle two is congruent to angle three and TV, segment line TV, bisects angle UTV, or UTW, sorry. Okay. From there, I'm going to just briefly look at where is angle two and angle three. Okay, so angle two and angle three are equivalent. I don't know if I can use that right now, but I do know that UTW is being bisected by T. So maybe one thing I can say is that angle 1 should be congruent to angle 2, right? Because of the angle bisector postulate, which just means that when I'm bisecting, it's creating equivalent sides of the angle, right? So because angle 1 is equal to angle 2, then that means that angle one can be congruent to angle three because of the transitive property of equality, okay? Or some of you may have used substitution because angle two is congruent to angle three, and if one is congruent to angle two, then that means angle one is equal to angle three. That will conclude our test review for chapter two. Thanks so much for tuning in. If this video helped you at all, give it a thumbs up. Good luck on your test later on, and I will catch you next time.